Turn to number 447. Number 447. Get our service. a second. Good to see Miss Barb Sherman back with us. And uh, were you here this morning? You're back tonight. First service in a while. She's been out and uh, under the weather and recovering and we're glad to see you. And we have the Broyles back here. Can you wave at us, Brother Broyles? They are missionaries to Brazil. Thank you. And they're home for a little bit and then going back to Brazil uh, at the end of August. So they were here. I think, were you here this morning as well? Okay, well, were you here tonight? I wasn't in here, so I don't know who was in here this morning. We were out, had a bit combined junior church service for our Carnival Sunday, and out there, there were 10 uh, kids who raised their hand and went with folks, and we showed them from the Bible, and they trusted Christ as their Savior. So 10 salvations out there. We had one in here get reassurance, I heard, in the auditorium. That's 11 total, and all really foundationally from the community day yesterday. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, church. For everybody who did some part, and uh, time would remiss for me to thank everyone individually, but all of you who had a part, had a part in seeing those folks saved today. And so thank you for your efforts. And then, of course, the cleanup today. If you walk around this property, you wouldn't even know we had a big uh, weekend like that. And so thank you to everybody who helped, stayed, cleaned up, folded up, rolled things up, and got the bishops on their way. We do miss them. Brother Dave Vanderford, if you can work your way up there, he's going to pray for our service and also be in prayer for our preacher. He's at Union Grove Baptist Church tonight preaching, and they're doing a month of revival type stuff and having different guest speakers. So I'll be speaking tonight, and while Dave, Brother Dave prays, if you want to sneak out at that time, uh, you feel more than welcome, and uh, but we look forward to a great service. Brother Dave is one of our many bus workers, and you bus workers who worked today and labored, and I know it was a different than normal day, but I'm sure at 3.30 and 4 o'clock is when many of those buses came back from their routes, and so thank you all. Again, everybody from the bus workers, the Sunday school teachers, and all who had a part to seeing those 11 souls saved today. Brother Dave, you lead us in prayer, and when he's done, you can be seated, and we'll enjoy the choir. Pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day and the many blessings you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for a good church we have to come to. And thank you so much for the souls that were saved this morning. Thank you for giving our buses safety, dear Lord. And uh, just thank you for our people here, all our workers and our folks that work behind the scenes that never get mentioned. I pray that you bless them abundantly. Be with us tonight. Be with Brother Clint as he preaches. Be with Brother White as he preaches at Union Grove. And I uh, will thank you and praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen.
is coming back some wonderful day. Praise the Lord for that. Got a few announcements while the ushers are coming tonight. Uh, the Freedom Kids, don't forget, they practice tonight to be ready to sing in service on Wednesday night. So make sure you're here for that, to hear their hard work and their singing for us on Wednesday night. If you're on the 50th anniversary committee, there'll be a meeting tonight in the Christian Workers Classroom following the PM service. So don't forget that. Monday night visitation, they'd like to have you out for that. Sun, Saturday morning, that's why I say Sunday morning visitation, but Saturday morning visitation at 10 o'clock. I also like to see you out for that too as well. Uh, the security team meeting will be next Sunday, April 24th at 4.15 in the Christian Workers Classroom. Birthday celebration for Miss Jennifer will be next Sunday after the PM service. Like I said this morning, get prepared for that this week. Uh, and don't forget that next Sunday night after the PM service. Also, there'll be a pastor's prayer team meeting uh, next Sunday after the PM service too as well. Let me encourage you again, if you're not a part of that, uh, to please join the pastor's prayer team. It's just a good vehicle to pray with one another and pray for the needs of our church. And just uh, call the church office if you'd like to get on that. It's a real blessing to be on that. I know many that are on that would attest to that. And ladies, we need a few more ladies to be on that too. So uh, if you're interested in joining the pastor's prayer team, please come to the meeting or call the church office and they'll get you on a schedule and someone to pray with too as well. We're going to be honoring our high school graduates on Sunday, May the 1st. So make sure you've got those graduates in and uh, make sure that uh, we participate in that. Lastly, our Freedom Kids newsletters are available in the vestibule. Remember to answer the pastor's question and place your answers in the blue box on the table in the vestibule. That's a blessing. I see a lot of these kids going back there with their little cards and filling that out and put them in a box. So make sure that if you've not put that in yet, to get that in the box in the back. All right, it's time to give. Brother Jerry Walker, if you'll pray for us. Our Father, Lord, we come, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this another day. And Father, Lord, we want to thank you for the day so far here at Freedom, Lord, for the souls that were saved and the ones that were saved yesterday. Father, we want to thank you for the safety on the buses today. And Father, Lord, now we pray that you'll take the offering, bless the gift and the giver, and bless Brother Clint as he breaks the bread of life tonight. For asking ask you in your name. Amen. Amen. Every hope that I have here in this so sinful world Joy within my heart. 
plane to our feet. The choir's going to come down and join you. Let's shake hands and meet some folks around you that you may not recognize. As we find our seats, thank you again for being here. And many of you have asked, as the last time I was up here and, and you saw the video we played of your youth pastor forgetting he was 43 years old and trying to do that backflip at the trampoline park, we did get x-rays. And for those of you who asked, I have a displaced lower manubrial fracture. So whatever the manubrium is, part of the sternum, it's fractured. And so there's about eight to 10 weeks of, of recovery. And so I had a choice. My doctor said I could put this plastic brace on and walk around for about 10 weeks like that, or uh, I could try some rehab, and after about four weeks, we'll check the rehab and see how we do from there, and if it's healing properly, they'll go ahead and let me continue to do that and avoid using the brace, and of course, limited activity. And I said, well, I am a youth pastor, and they said, well, limited activity, or we'll put the brace on you. So I'm trying, if you could pray for me, to do that, and I can't express enough how grateful this has been these last several weeks, church, and I would speak on behalf of your pastor, but all that we've gone through from, I was just thinking the last several weeks, we had the teen dinner and a show, then of course the youth revival, then the ladies conference, and then of course this big event this past weekend, and so I was going through my bulletin in Sunday school about the events in May, and I don't mean this bad, but praise God, there's not much. Uh, but I do know this, uh, I did kind of peruse through, and I'm sure I missed a few, but of all the folks that registered online, and where's Justin? Is Justin, he's, he's back there. Justin has a printout of those of you who registered online, but we printed that out on Saturday morning about 10.30 or 11, and there were more people who registered after that getting here at 1 and 2, so if we compile that and take out the freedom people. Can I be as kind to say it that way? And I look at names that don't look like they attend us on a regular basis. We've got over 50 cards that represent a family each. And so we'll need to follow up on those, Brother Jerry. And um, I'm also thinking, you know, some of those addresses are Mount Airy, Pinnacle, Pofftown, obviously King, Ruhal, and Winston. And uh, what we'll try to do is compile those. And if you and your wife want to go by and make that follow-up visit, that'd be tremendous. And so we'll get those organized. We're going to work to get all that information and follow. And again, they may attend XYZ Baptist Church, and they may be a deacon there, and they just brought their grandkids to enjoy. That's fine. Uh, but each of those houses have a house next to them. And so we can make that visit and then knock on the ones that it could be a great evangelistic tool to continue to reach folks. So let's try to use that over the next few weeks since there's nothing scheduled on the calendar and we'll try our best to do that. Uh, let's get ready for prayer. We'll have the ladies sing and then I'll be in Mark chapter number. Well, it's all good. I wrote it down here though. Let's go Mark chapter number five. Uh, Mark chapter number five. We'll have prayer, the ladies will sing, and then I'll come up and preach. And I know preachers out of town, and they say when the cat's away, the mice play. But uh, we'll, we'll get quickly through the service, and then our meetings, and then let you spend time with your family, especially those of you who've labored so much this weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you 
for your work. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Freedom Baptist Church and what they have done collectively over the last several months. But as we think about our meeting after church with those part of the 50th anniversary, what Freedom Baptist Church has done through the decades to get the gospel out, to reach people, to help people, to build lives and families so we could have a good judgment seat. I pray that we'll continue to do that. I pray for our preacher even now as he's uh, a guest speaker in another church. I pray you give him liberty. I pray you, Lee, as he'd scan that building, that you'd make him feel comfortable thinking that that family reminds me of this family at our church and this family here reminds me of this family at our church so we can feel comfortable to preach the word of God. Bless this song we're about to hear and then the message to follow. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. What do you say to someone who feels like they've lost it all? Over the edge with no one there to break their fall. What do you say to someone who feels so unloved? Giving themselves away a little bit every day just to be good enough. And what do you say to a hopeless soul who can't remember their way home and everything is out of their control? There is no valley, there is no darkness, there is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus. There is no moment, there is no distance there is no heartbreak he can't take you through so before you think that you're too lost to save remember there is nothing greater than grace what do you say whose life is on the line they're unsure what happens after their last breath in time and what do you say to someone who's built a wall you can't break through and it's so hard for them to hear the truth there is no valley there is no darkness there is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus. There is no moment, there is no distance, there is no heartbreak he can't take you through. So before you think that you're too lost to save, remember there is nothing greater love that song. I remember the first time I heard it, I had it on repeat and I drive in my car and I know I don't sing good, but I, when you put those windows down, you can just sing out and enjoy it. But I'm the worst at remembering the words to songs. 
And that chorus is, there is no uh, valley, there is no darkness, there is no sorrow. And I always get those mixed up, and I always thought sorrow was the first word. And then when you hear the correct word, you try to correct it, but it just doesn't sound right when you say, there is no Sally, there is no... And I'm thinking, why am I singing about Sally? And so I just start to turn the radio up and stop listening to me sing it. But uh, uh, Mark chapter number five is where you're at, I believe. Is that correct? Good. Now let's go to Mark chapter 11, which is my text, okay? So I apologize for that. And uh, Broyles, thank you again for honoring us uh, to come back from the mission field and visit our church. We're grateful. Um, if you get a chance, you're probably visiting several churches while you're back. I understand that. Please come back. I know our pastor and his wife would like to see you and greet you and talk to you as well. And if there's any other visitors here, please, please, please come back. Um, it's not as bad as you think. The pastor's much better and you'll enjoy it a lot more. And so we're grateful to be here. I am, this is literally part two of a Sunday school lesson I started two weeks ago, and it doesn't happen often, but uh, after the Sunday school lesson, I was uh, text, uh, texted twice by two different families who just were thanking me for the lesson and how much it was a help to them, and they're trying to apply it to their lives. And to be really, Brother Jimmy, uh, honest, in the last four and a half years of teaching that class, which I love and enjoy, I've never had two families text me and thank I'm not... Poor mouth, oh, y'all pray for Brother Clint, my messages stink. Now, I, don't, I don't mean that, I would teach it regardless, but it was just interesting that both of these would just say, boy, it was awesome, my husband and I, or my, my wife and I have been talking about this all week, it's just been a blessing, and so I figured if it helped them, maybe it'd help us. So instead of finishing this lesson this morning, like I wanted to, uh, I'm just gonna preach it tonight. And so I told those folks in my Sunday school class, just during the first few moments of the message that you already heard, just act like you've heard it for the first time. And so we'll try our best to do this. This outline literally came from to, to me as my daughter was rummaging through her mother's things, uh, getting ready for a turn back the clock or something. It was some crazy day she's getting. She found my wife's box from high school. All the stuff from the 80s, right? And uh, she found this little project my wife put together, and she grew up in California, and at their church on an almost yearly basis, it seemed back then, uh, Dr. Lee Robertson would go to their church and preach, and uh, she had a little, not a, it almost looked like a newspaper clipping, but it was something that Dr. Lee Robertson gave out at the church, I think in 1987 or 88, and it was there, and it was simply this, seven words every Christian needs. Seven words every Christian needs. And this uh, uh, revered man of God, and I know he's just human, but a man who was used by God to shake this part of the country for Christ, if not just through his, the great Highland Park Baptist Church, but through his works and efforts through Camp Joy and the thousands upon tens of thousands of young people who've attended summer camp free of charge as a result of that and getting the gospel out and scores of folks saved. And so using that, I kind of looked at it, and he, he just had these words listed, and I kind of just studied them and, and applied them to my life and wound up making this lesson out of it. Seven words that every Christian needs. Number one, the word is this, faith. Faith. And I know I preached last Wednesday, do you believe in miracles? Yes, and we need faith to believe. So I won't belabor this point, but in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22, the Bible says, very simply and plainly. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. And isn't it interesting that we all agree that we'll have faith for God to take us to heaven, but sometimes it's hard to exercise faith for him to help us live on earth. We'll have faith that he can take us to a heaven we've not seen, but we sometimes don't have the faith for him to help us to get through the end of the week. And every Christian must exercise faith in God. Hebrews teaches us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, you might impress your buddies and you might impress your neighbors that you can do certain things without faith, but it means absolutely nothing in the sight of God. He wants his children to exercise faith, faith in God. Uh, this is one of my devotional booklets I've used throughout the years, and uh, it's a 365-day journal and devotional, and 
This is one of my favorites. It's for August 17th, but the devotion itself is phenomenal on the topic of faith. Let me read it to you. Speaking of George Mueller, the great uh, man of God of, of yesteryears, we could say, but it said this, I went to America some years ago with a captain of a steamer who was a very devoted Christian. When off the coast of Newfoundland, he said to me, the last time I crossed here five weeks ago, something happened which, which revolutionized the whole of my Christian life. We had George Mueller of Bristol on board. I had been on the bridge 24 hours and never left it. George Mueller came to me and said, Captain, I have come to tell you that I must be in Quebec Saturday afternoon. It is impossible, I said to him. Very well, if your ship cannot take me, God will find some other way. I have never broken an engagement in 57 years of speaking. Let us go down to the chart room and pray. I looked at the man of God and thought to myself, what, a, what lunatic asylum can that man have come from? The, the captain said. I never heard of such a thing as this. Mr. Mueller, I said, do you know how dense the fog is? No, replied Mr. Mueller. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He knelt down and prayed one of the most simple prayers. And when he had finished, I was going to pray. But he put his hand on my shoulder and told me not to pray. I asked why, and he replied, first, you do not believe he will answer. And second, I believe he already has. And there's no need whatsoever for you to pray about it. I looked at him and said, uh, I looked at him and he said, Captain, I have known my Lord for 57 years and there has never been a single day that I have failed to get the audience with the king. Get up, Captain, and open the door and you will find the fog is gone. The captain replied, uh, the captain stated, I got up and the fog was indeed gone. On Saturday afternoon, George Mueller was in Quebec for his engagement. Wow, that's some faith by that man. But it's not limited to just that man. You can exercise that same faith. It's your choice. Faith must be an integral part in the life of every Christian. Word number two in the life of Christians is the word obedience. John chapter 14. So we're in the book of Mark. Let's turn over to Luke. Let's go to John chapter 14. And again, it doesn't get any more basic or simple than this if you think about it. John chapter 14, verse number 15. And I know we want some long, drawn-out process that winds up ending with this result, but it's as simple as this, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> God wants us to obey him as an act and showing of our love for him. He doesn't want us to obey so he can be in charge because obedience is in and of itself the greatest showing of love that a child can show to their parents, that a spouse can show to one another, that a friend can show to one another, is that you do what you say you're going to do and that you do what you're told. Neil Martin you don't know the name, but he was a member of the British Parliament up until 1983. And Neil Martin was in the uh, State House there in, in England, and he was getting ready to show the, uh, some friends of his a tour of the parliamentary offices and buildings. Lord Hamilton was there, and they were friends from childhood, but Neil Martin was bringing this group, and he had instructed them on how to behave there in the building. That if uh, this were to happen, you would stop and let them pass by you. If, if an office door was open, you would stop and look and, and admonish the person. You don't ignore anybody. He gave them specific rules. And when he came around to the corner here, he turned and he saw Lord Hamilton. Lord Hamilton saw his buddy. And Lord Hamilton was in his British regalia of office for Parliament. And Neil Martin, as he brought the group, they made the turn. And Lord Hamilton, just in grinning, goes, Neil! And immediately the group and the tours all went down to one knee. <laughs> Lord Hamilton was saying N-E-I-L. Hey, Neil. They thought he was saying K-N-E-E-L. How obedient should we as the children of God be as well? 
Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. It's more than a children's song. It's a Bible principle that if you love me, keep my commandments. So those of you who say, how am I supposed to obey everything in the Bible? All you have to obey is the parts you know. And then when you learn a little bit more, then you just add that and start obeying that. And then as you're faithful to Sunday school and church and you start to learn more of the Bible, then you start to obey that. And it's a continual process of learning and obeying and learning and obeying and learning and obeying. And it's not only a process of learning and obeying, it's a show of love for your heavenly Father. If you love me, keep my commandments. Word number three, Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. Again, just a few books over. We're in John, so let's go to Acts, and now let's go to Romans. I would say a familiar passage of Scripture. Now, before I read this, is there, I don't care how old you are, if you, but I could use some participation. I would need somebody or two people with a dollar bill. Does anybody have a dollar bill that Brother Clint can, can use you for? Anybody? I, we already had the offering. Don't do it. Well, you took all my money. That's silly. Who has a dollar bill that maybe you could help Brother Clint? Yeah, Brother Keith, come on up here. If you could come up here, please. Is there anybody else that has a dollar bill that wants to help Brother Ed? Come on, Daniel, come on. All right, here we go. So, We'll have Brother Keith up here and Brother Daniel. You guys just stand on each end of the carpet here for a second. And boy, we couldn't have found a better dichotomy of height, could we? <laughs> Look at this. All right, hold on to that. We're going to play David and Goliath now, all right? Man. All right, here we go. Let's, let's look at this verse, and let's also ask God to help us understand this verse. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice... Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And help me with this. Here it says, and be not, what's the next word? All right, we'll try it again. And be not to this world, but be ye by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Here we go now. Ready? Watch this. Brother Keith, let me see your dollar. Okay. This is indeed a dollar. I'm going to take this dollar. Thank you very much. And uh, you can be seated. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Stay there, stay there. I appreciate that. I'm going to give you a dollar back. Is that okay? Yes. Put your hand out. Okay? Thank you all right with that? Yeah. So you can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. He gave me what? One dollar. I know you couldn't see, but if you heard them drop in there, what I give back to them? I gave him four quarters, but technically speaking, it was one dollar. Is it the same or different? Same. Pretty much the same. All right. Daniel, what do you got over here? A dollar. A dollar. All right. Can I take this? Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, we'll get on to the message here and move. I got to give you something back? I guess so. Right. He gave me that. There you go. There's that right there. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what? What's? Wait a minute. Huh? Why does his face look a little different than Brother Keys? What do you have? Ten dollar bill. Well, wait a minute. That not that the same thing? No, it's it's different. Well, but wait a minute. It's the same texture. It's the same paper. It's a, no, no, no. It's it's different. His one dollar has been transformed into something totally different. Here you go. You can keep it. Keys dollar. Y'all pray for Keith. He's got a bad spirit right now. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Brother White, I did one sermon illustration, and Brother Keith got mad and left the church. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was probably unfair for you folks over here, and Brother Daryl, I know how much you love working with kids, but I don't... But if did you see the the countenance of Daniel when he realized. <laughs> you realize that's what Christ was expecting when he asked his children to be consecrated unto him. When was the last time you gave God that feeling? 
because you were transformed, not just a different variation of the same original thing. Conformed versus transformed. There is a difference. There's a difference between Gentile and Jew. There's a difference between lost and saved. And there's a difference between saved as so by fire and consecrated. Words in the lives of every Christian, faith. Words in the life of every Christian, obedience. Words in the life of every Christian, consecrated, whole to thee. Are we just part of the family or are we consecrated and set apart? There were a lot of folks who got saved, but there were only 12 disciples. There was 12 disciples, but there was an inner three. And there was an inner three, but there was one that leaned on Jesus' breast. You see, you are, you are as consecrated to God as you want to be. So are you conformed or are you transformed? Let's move quickly to word number four, shall we? As we think about this next word, Mark chapter 10, verses 43 and 44, back in the Gospels, of course. Mark chapter 10, we've spoken about faith. We've spoken about obedience. We've spoke about consecration. Now let me quickly say this. The word is going to be service. And I almost feel inadequate to speak on this, especially what we've just experienced this weekend in areas of service. And you just did an outstanding job, church. But Mark chapter 10, verses 43 and 44, But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be chiefest shall be servant of all. To serve Christ is one of the greatest feelings you can have in the world. If we were to ask you if you could serve for a week on the cabinet of this office or to serve at the state representative office or the count, you would kind of feel, boy, I get to work there, yet every day you have an opportunity to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I think about within our church, and again, I can go on from yesterday from our parking lot greeters at the Family Fun Day to the registration to our food and games right back here and all the workers of the inflatables and all the folks at food services and the folks who helped with the emergency we had and then the other folks who worked with the other emergency we had and getting it all cleaned up and then doing it again Sunday to a smaller capacity, but getting all, we found areas to serve. But I was just saying, if you're looking for one through Freedom Baptist Church, you can serve in the nursery, moms. You can volunteer to help one Sunday and the more moms we get, it'll be less times to work. We can just put it on three, four, five ladies and let them cycle through all the time or other of us, uh, as, uh, others of us can volunteer and we can have a, a team of 25 or 30 ladies who work once every month or two or something. It's an area of service. We can work in little people's church or tiny tots. Miss Sherry Bullinger has a list of some ladies and I know we feel, oh, but I'll have to miss out on the 11 o'clock service. No, you're not missing out on the 11 o'clock service. You are partaking in a service for young people to have the word of God taught to them. And Miss Aletha helps organize a group of ladies that can help uh, in that children's ministry as well. We have children's church. Third, fourth, and uh, I mean, I'm sorry, first, second, and third grade, Brother Jamie and Miss Christy Waters and others help on a volunteer basis, and they help teach, and they help kids to sit up straight, and they help, no, no, no talking, you need to listen, they're, they're, they're preaching the Bible right now, and folks in junior church, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, hey, we've got a great group of teenagers who uh, have learned the art of service and are working in there, but can I tell you the, the difficulty with teaching and training teenagers? They graduate, and then they leave. And here you are helping these young people to learn the joy of serving and working, and then they gotta leave. And I don't know, Brother Chris, you're losing a few seniors this year. We could use about five more workers in junior church May 1st. 
I mean, I don't want to leave Chris Hutchins, Chris Fischel, and Miss Angie in there with 50 kids and say, all right, go preach the gospel to them. Good luck. We just need folks who know that that's their job to usher in there and to help watch these seven or eight kids in an area in which you can serve. You could serve in teen church. Brother Daniel Ritchie, uh, what do we have today in there? 27. That's a little higher than normal because of the big carnival day and stuff. But we could use folks in there to help them and teach them. Because if we're not careful, we just start going, well, those kids don't behave. They don't behave in most cases because they don't know how. And like the Ethiopian eunuch spoke of the scriptures and of baptism and said, how can I know except some man guide me? All they need is a little bit of instruction. No, 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 no. We, we don't put those earbuds in when it's church time. You need to put those in your pocket, and if you can't, I'll hold on to it to you, and then I'll give it to you when the service is over. That's how we do it here. And now that they know, now they can obey, now they can learn, now they can grow. Service in teen church. Service as an usher, as a greeter, as a choir member, in our orchestra. Service in the bus ministry. You know, I was, I was thinking that there's so many areas in which, oh, I can't visit, but I'd like to. Some people just support the bus ministry financially. Some people just bring bags of candy and say, Brother Clint, give this to some bus captain this week. Brother Clint, you do this for, uh, well, what are the, then some ladies have even asked, is there a roll sheet we have of those bus riders? I'd just like to pray over them if I could. There is an area in which you can serve. Amen. Service can be a great feeling for those who love the Lord. We know him in vain if we don't serve him. And we serve him in vain if we don't know him. But if for those of us who are Christians and know the King of Kings, Lord, let's do our best to serve him and help others as well. The fifth word, and I'm hurrying, watchfulness. Matthew 25, 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. <laughs> you know, we ought to be waking up every morning and wondering if today's the day. And I know we can look at the times and things going on around us and another earthquake and another tsunami and another mass killing and another this and that and go, boy, I tell you what, it's waxing worse and worse. I bet it's getting closer and closer. And I would tend to agree with many folks on that, but I would say this, if it is getting closer and closer, shouldn't we be living cleaner and cleaner? I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, uh, if we, uh, we don't know the date, and, and I don't know how many people have tried to, Harold Camping and others trying to say, oh, he's going to come on this date. He's going to come on that date. He's going to come on this date. And you know what? We're not going to know the date, but I know this. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. We used to wake up and say, you know, we ought to be looking for the second coming and say, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. Now we wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> and, and we're missing it. A watchfulness is today the day. Could this be the day? Maybe today my Lord will come for me. Maybe today. And as we sing that chorus, the thought is this. Could he be coming today? If he was, we would be living cleaner lives. I didn't get saved till I was 18, and there were times, I've said this before to the teenagers, I'm sure, that mom and dad went away for the weekend, and my older brother had friends over, and those friends brought friends, and they brought friends, and they brought friends. And mom and dad weren't supposed to come home till late Sunday night. And Saturday afternoon, man, we heard the tires coming in the driveway, Brother Jeff. Oh, my goodness. It was pick up all the red Solo cups, put all the cans in here, let's go, let's go. Everyone out the back, you can jump the fence and go through my neighborhood. Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. We weren't ready. Now, in the past, when we knew mom was coming back and dad were coming back on Sunday afternoon, boy, that morning was we became the best cleaning lady crew you can think of in the whole area of Reseda, California. We used the vacuum. We, used, we cleaned everything up. Why? Because we knew they were coming back. If we really were watching and believed that Christ was coming back, I think we'd be a lot cleaner. Watchfulness. Words in the life of Christians. Number six, Matthew chapter nine, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they were fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. The sixth word is compassion. 
The best definition I've heard about compassion is your hurt in my heart. No one can truly understand. I see Miss Joan back there, I think, and I see Sharon, and I mentioned to you guys in class, I don't know if your ears were itching, but I think this is a true statement. You can correct me if I'm wrong, I'd be fine. But you two can exchange stories and try to encourage one another in the loss of a child for both of you, but really when it's all said and done, even Joan will never fully understand what Sharon's feeling and Sharon will never, though they can try to, it's just unique to you as individuals. And if we're not careful, we get this feeling of, well, Brother Roy can say he loves me and he's praying for me and he understands the pain I feel, but he's never had a lower fracture, maybe whatever, you know, whatever it is. And I can get in this area where I'm messing up his opportunity to show compassion on me and the more compassion I feel, the more compassion I want to give. It's amazing. I would say this, as his verse speaks of this, they were scattered abroad as sheep, not having a shepherd. I want to remind our church how grateful we should be for the shepherd that God has given us. Take that, devil. I said, we got a great shepherd of this church. Ha, ha, ha. We do. And I want to remind all of you folks, when you speak to your pastor and say, I want to tell you this in confidence, I want to remind you, it is. So when you come to me a few days later after you're meeting with him and you say, pastor probably told you, he didn't. He loves you enough to keep confidence with you. He loves many of you enough that I just happened to catch one time, but I know he's done this before, but because of whatever it is said church member may be going through, said church member doesn't want to come meet at the church because he's afraid if he gets here and someone sees them pull up, they may be going to. So your pastor loves you enough and has compassion enough for you that he meets you at a public restaurant or a public place and he'll meet you there and counsel with you and pray with you and take your burden as well. And he would carry that. And I've not seen a pastor show compassion like that. I'm telling you, there may be other men who have a title pastor who may be great orators and pulpiteers and their messages sound like this and they're so refreshed and they're this and it's all this and that but I don't know of a person who holds a title pastor that shows the compassion that John White shows on the members of Freedom Baptist Church you ought to thank God for that and I would take the shepherd's heart over a pulpiteer seven days a week I'm not saying either that our pastor doesn't know how to preach the Bible and help us. Good night. If you've seen the altars and you've seen you uh, reacting to the messages he's given us, we know he helps us there as well. But don't let him be the only one sharing that compassion. You learn to do it too. You learn to show that compassion as well. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Hey, when someone asks you to pray for them, I dare you to stop, write it down so you can pray for them, and then pray for them right there. Brother Jimmy comes, hey, Brother, Brother Clint, can you pray for my marriage? Miss Connie's on me all the time, man. I just tell you what. I, I tell you this in confidence, Brother Clint. Great, Brother Jimmy, all right. Let me, write, let me put in my phone here, and let's pray right now. If you're visiting or new here, I'm just joking, all right? They're, they're, right? So, okay. And, uh, <laughs> hey, Brother Clint, I got finals this week. Can you make sure to pray for me? Sure. All right, come on. Here, let's pray right now. And then what day are your finals, and what time is it at? Let's show compassion. Not just, you want to pray? Okay, I'll pray for you. Um, we go to these prayer meetings and stuff. I know there's a lot of things mentioned. Pray for this, pray for that, pray for this, pray for this. Uh, we can't remember them all, and I, that's great that we can pray. Father, we don't, I don't remember all the requests that were made, but I'm thank God you do. Okay, well, can you remember one or two or three of them? And then contact them and follow up and say, hey, we were in prayer meeting, and they were asked to pray about this. How's it going? Compassion. 
compassion. And then lastly, the word seven, word number seven is this, faithfulness. First Corinthians chapter number four, verse number two. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithfulness. I don't know, we, 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 we always argue the attributes of God sometimes in a doctrine class. What is his greatest attribute? Is it the fact that he loves? Is it the fact that he's merciful? Is it the fact that he's just? Is it the fa- We can list all those things. What it boils down to is the fact that he never changes. And he is faithfully loving. And he is faithfully merciful. And he is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. If faithfulness is an attribute in our God, faithfulness should be in the attributes of us. Amen. We should be faithful to our faith. We should be faithful to our family. We should be faithful to our friends. We should be faithful in our fellowship. We can go on and on and on about things to be faithful. What it boils down to this is be faithful in the small, be faithful in the secret, be faithful in the sacred the key to a great Christian life. Of the small things, an innkeeper at a hotel on a stormy night, an elderly couple entered the lobby, and they said, we'd like to get a room, but I can't send a fine couple like you out in the rain. We don't have a room. Would you be willing to sleep in my quarters here? The elderly couple looked at him and hesitated, and Though they went through it, they said the next morning when the man paid his bill, he says, you're the kind of man, talking to the innkeeper, you're the kind of man who should be managing the best hotel in the United States. Someday I'll build you one. The clerk smiled politely and a few years later received a a letter from an elderly man recalling that stormy night and asking him to come to New York City with a round trip ticket. When the clerk arrived, his host took him to the corner of 5th Avenue and 34th Street, where stood a magnificent new building. That, explained the elderly man, is the hotel I have built for you to manage. The man's name was William Waldorf Astor. The hotel is now known as the Waldorf Astoria. And Mr. George C. Bolt became the first manager of the Waldorf Astorial because he was faithful in the small things. You realize if you are faithful to a bunch of small things, look at it, you would see that that's a pretty big thing. Let's be faithful in the small. Let's be faithful in the secret. It's amazing for those of you who look at social media that faithfully you see how awesome everybody's life is. But it's rare that, and I guess pride and things, people faithfully talking about the secret things they do. Prayed for my wife and kids this morning. You don't see that much on social media. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but if you think everyone's life on social media is their actual life, You've missed it. Be faithful in the secret things. When your kids don't know it, but you swing by and pick up their favorite drink before you get them at their after-curricular school event, that's a secret thing you should be faithful to. Faithfully making your bed in the morning, faithfully doing this, the secret things. And then these sacred things. Let us be faithful to the things God has allowed us to be a part of that he's shown us in our devotions with him, that he's shown us in our services we attend with him, that he's shown us through God's man that he brought our way. Seven words in the lives of every Christian. Do all seven exist in you? Do five exist in you? Do three exist? Do any of them? Let's be faithful to have these words prevalent in the lives of us, not because we're members of Freedom Baptist Church, but because we're children of God the Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Bible and the principles that are given to us that can help us to lead lives and live lives that give you the honor and glory that you so richly deserve. 
I pray now, God, that as we think about these words that we've seen, all biblical words, all words that help us to see the importance of living for you. God, I pray that we would be strong in faith, strong in obedience, strong in consecration. Maybe it's service, watchfulness, compassion, or faithfulness. But maybe there's some area that we can improve in. I ask God that if you've shown us something tonight, that we would react as a result of it. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. The ladies are going to sing. The music's playing. Hello, Pastor White here. I want to thank you for tuning in to our live stream today. Uh, whether you watched it live or on YouTube uh, or maybe an archive sermon, thank you so much for taking the time to do so. And I wanted to conclude the message today by telling you a few things uh, about how God feels about you and us in general. First of all, I want you to know today, if you're listening, God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that means you, friend. And so I want you to know today God loves you. The second thing I want you to know is that all of us are sinners. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, every one of us. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to encourage you today, friend. There is hope for you. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to talk to someone about trusting Christ as your Savior, you can do so. You can reach us at the church here at area code 336-969-6937 or you can reach us on our website at freedombaptistrh.com where we'll have more information about salvation. And we'd love for you to let us know of your decision for Jesus Christ today. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please don't hesitate to call or email or visit our website. And we trust that you'll find the help needed in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a wonderful day. And may God bless you. Thank you again for listening to our broadcast.